great organization. Their fan base is phenomenal. I mean, except for, you know, Popcorn Boy. Other than that, this, it was a great, great experience for us. Um, a couple of things got away from us, but before I, I mean, I, I got, I'm reflecting as much as I can without thinking too much, but we couldn't stop fouling them. And then Curry got hot in that third quarter. He made some tough shots and against a, one of our feisty defenders. Simmons is, um, I don't know if he's going to get defensive player of the year, but I think he's defensive player of the year. Not too many guys can guard one through five. And he can guard one through five. I mean, there's some guys that can guard one position and do it well, but there's only a handful of guys that can do it like he does. But we couldn't get any, couldn't get any rhythm um, offensively. But give, like I said, give them credit. They did a, they did a heck of a job. And of course, you guys have been eliminated. Um, your season, as memorable as it was, uh, is over. What, what's your reaction to it, it being done? Well, I mean, I never really thought about it going up until the last, you know, ten minutes or so. But I'm proud of our guys. I talked to them after the game, and Russell and Bradley spoke up. They, I mean, they nailed it. It was spot on. We, we should be proud of what we accomplished. We had a lot of stuff that happened to us. We made a transition a couple of years ago. Tommy took over and we wanted to change things up. And I know it's working because what Russell and Brad said, it definitely, it is right where we need to go. And unfortunate part that, you know, we wanted to keep building and keep building and, 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 put ourselves in the, in the next step. And we did that. We made the playoffs this year. Unfortunately, Danny did not get the playoff experience or even TB for that, for that matter. If you need a playoff experience, you just do. It's just part of it. This is a very tough environment and the level of intensity goes up. You got to be able to fill it. You can watch it. You can see it. You can talk about it. You can, but you got to fill it in. And our guys, love, all of up and everybody up other than those two guys got that experience. So I'm proud of, I'm proud of our guys' effort. I'm proud of um, everything they've done this year that put ourselves in this position. You guys know a lot of things that happen, but not all the things that happen. And it's pretty incredible that we've just kept fighting and fighting and plugging away and, and, and not making any excuses because we had a lot of excuses to make. I did, they did. But we never, we never let each other do that. And that's what I love about the group. There's no drama. There's no drama this year. <laughs> There's no drama. We were just ballers, man. We just wanted to get better. Everybody came to work and did their job. And I love coaching this team. I've coached a lot of teams now, but this team was fun because they, they competed for one another and they just wanted to play basketball. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of opportunity to even practice. But that's what this season was about, just figuring things out together. And But it was, I, other than the feeling I have not playing in front of our home crowd one more night, I'm proud of what we've, I'm proud of what we've accomplished. Making the playoffs where, you know, they had us 0 .006 or whatever percent that is. And I thought that was maybe my scoring average. But other than that, it was pretty cool that we, we fought through it and, and made it. Fred. Scott, uh, you, I, I, I don't know, you know what we're going to be doing for moving forward, but uh, where, where do you stand right now in terms of your future with the organization and, and if you want to be back? Say that again? Where do you stand right now with your future with the organization and, and if you want to be back now that the season's done? No, I love it here. It's, it's not, there's no decision in my mind. I love it here. I have gotten to know Ted and his family and the ownership group and and what I saw the the first you know four three and a half years was really incredible and then I don't know what exact date that was March 10th right after the Nick game when COVID suspended play that's when I really saw what great ownership is about and I saw it firsthand and 
he made he made every decision based on our team, our employees, our people, and that's what a good organization is about. It's not about nothing but the people. And what I saw there, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to move on. I love it here. Love the city. Family loves it. But like I said, that's it's for a later time. And we focused on the season this year, and that was more important than anything. But what I saw firsthand is that's what leadership is about. I, I've learned a lot about being a leader by seeing how they led. And, and Tommy's given me a great opportunity. Like I said, I love the guys. All we, we have nothing but good guys that want to play, play hard and play for one another. And, and that's special. And, you know, we're not, we're not experienced right now, but we, we, we gain a lot of experience by playing against the, a playoff savvy team. Look at all those guys on that team. They're all maybe except the, the one, uh, Tyrese. Corkmaz played a bunch of big games overseas, but all their all their guys they've had a lot of playoff tough moments, but they fought through it and came back the next year a little bit better. Team's ready to win. You know, hopefully, uh, Embiid is going to come back healthy. Uh, they're going to be hard to beat. Da. Hey Scott, um, I know we, I know you're you're still, you know, in the process of processing this game. But when you look at your your, your team, whether it's from within or within who's there now, or if it has to come from elsewhere, what's the next step? What has to what's the next step for this group to kind of be able to compete and get to the playoffs as a given, and then maybe have a chance to advance? Yeah, I mean that's that's the next level. Yeah, you you want to get there, and then all of a sudden you want to give yourself a chance. We wanted to get here, you know. Now, now the next step we have we have two big time players that are still have a lot of basketball left. Brad is what is it? I don't even. I think Brad's twenty seven still. He's been in the league, and every year he's gotten better. Look what he's done. The year before I got here, I think it was sixteen, seventeen points a game. Now. The last two years, he was second in the league in scoring, led the East in scoring, and should have made the all-star team all five times. And Russell still has a lot of good basketball left in him. We have a, a, a some young players that are going to get better, and the experience that they got here was huge. And then we got a draft pick that you know we've done well there. But we have we have a lot of opportunities to Tommy and his staff are going to. Um, do what's best for the organization. And, you know, we, we, we have a good base moving forward. I like what we have. We have a lot of good young players. We have two star players and we got some room to add more players. And, you know, every team, you know, you don't come back the same group. I know that the players know that we've been in the league long enough. If you won the championship, maybe you do, but mm -hmm. We have opportunities to improve our team. I'm looking forward to being a part of it, but I trust Tommy and his staff to figure um, ways to get us better. But Rui's definitely on, on he's trending, he's trending pretty good. I like how he's improved and he's stepped up through some really, he had some unfortunate luck on his part, but he just keeps playing. He wants to get better. Denny. Fortunately for him, he was out. But you know, midsummer he'll be back, and don't know what's going to happen with summer league. But he's a worker. But then we got another young player, and Gaff. Gaff is really. I, mean, I don't even know why. You know, I'm sure I'm going to have an exit meeting the next day or two. But Gaff is to me is like a lottery pick. Hmm. We got we got like a top five pick. He's a young player with a couple of years left on his on his deal. But he has he's I can't wait to to see his improvement and work with him all summer long. Ava. Scott, um, Brad always said heading into this season um, that he wanted to see that the Wizards could be a winning organization. You've obviously had many more conversations with him than we have about what he considers or how he defines that. Do you feel like you guys have, have done enough to kind of show him that, yes, you can you can be a winner in Washington? Well, that, I mean, I. I think this has gotten a lot of credit. Or, I mean, a lot of talk, and it was to me, it was the biggest part when Tommy took over. Brad, Brad saw something that he was very comfortable signing an extension. You know, so 
he he he's he's our organization. His his work ethic, his professionalism. Now he has Russell right there, and his work ethic, his professional, his drive, and determination. It's pretty it's pretty cool to really see those two guys' relationship just grow, and. I knew it wouldn't be an issue, but nobody else did. But I had I had an inside track. I knew both of them very well. I love them. I love both their families, and I love how they. There was plenty of times they both told the team their teammates wake the, you know, up at times. But there's been many times they've taken them out to dinner and showed them how to be pros and. When you have those two guys leading your organization, now Tommy and myself's job is to grow the team organically and get them better. And our young guys got an experience and keep improving their their level of play, their basketball knowledge, and that comes through experience. And add a, a piece or two or three or four pieces here and there, and we're going to be right right back in it where we want to be. Matt Paris. Scott, I know you uh, want to be back, and do you think? How do you think the the end of the season kind of played into that decision? Um, I mean, do you think it, you made a solid case for yourself that you should be back? Say that again. I you went in and out. Do you, uh, do you, you know? Do, do you feel like you made a case for yourself the way the guys was the end of the year that, that you deserve to be back? Yeah, I mean, I never. I mean, I, you guys. Don't know me well, but I think you guys know me well enough. I've been blessed. I've played over a decade in this league and nobody thought I would make it. Did it, won a championship, assistant coach, been a head coach, uh, been some playoff games, went to, won some playoff series, but I've never, I've never, I don't worry about my position. I worry about my job of doing it. I mean, I worry about doing my job every day. Uh, my mom taught me a lot of good lessons in my life and that's one of them. Do your job and everything will take care of it. Don't worry about other people complaining about it or the criticism. That's, that's just part of being in my position. Um, that's just part of being a player in this league. It's part of being a coach in this league. It's part of being a general manager, an owner. It's just part of it. Everybody has an opinion. And I like that because that's what I do too. I love sports. I, I do the same thing with other sports. I do the same thing with other teams, but I love, I love my job. I love the guys I'm working with. I love the team that I'm working with. I love the organization or, owner, the city. There's nothing, it's not about me. It's about our, our players. It's always been about our players. And um, that's all, that's all I care about is the guys I work with. And does the exit process look any different this year because of COVID or anything like that, like the way the guys would normally meet to like, will you hold, have your normal meeting basically? No, it was, it was, this was a, this was the, this was the worst year ever when you want, if you like people, I mean, it's been great. I mean, I even miss you guys. I don't, I, I mean, I, middle of next year, ask me that quick question. You might have to go back to Zoom calls, but I, I, COVID was hard, but I always look at, like, I try to keep everything in proper perspective. COVID was hard for all of us NBA, but it, that, those are like first world problems. It's not as, I mean, there's a lot of people that lost their jobs and people that lost family members. And NBA people have lost family members. Uh, I have friends that lost their jobs. And, but it's, um, we have good ownership, man. We kept going. I mean, look at, the financial burden that I'm assuming, I don't know the numbers, but there was no fans, there was no concerts, there was no hockey fans, but Ted and his group took care of everybody. And I, I thank him for that. And, and everybody in the organization does the same. But COVID was hard on everybody, but it's not, we, we're like the, it's not that, I mean, there's a lot more people in the world that suffer through it and we have to figure out ways to move forward and hopefully soon that everything becomes normal and we're back to being you know pre-pandemic uh level so hopefully that happens soon 
Yeah. You there, Candace? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, hey, Scott. Hey, Candace. Just wondering, because you already mentioned that you had a mission of growing the players organically, you and Tommy. Um, and with such a young roster at the start of the season, did Ted give you the stated goal of playoffs? And to that point, do you think that you overachieved? Um, I've never, I've never looked at it. I just wanted to do my job and I, our coaches, I'm proud of them. Like I said, we had, this was a, you guys know all the things. It's not common to, to lose, um, you know, lose a player to injury and, and then have COVID hit and not see our guys for 10 days in the middle of January. And then seven guys missed basically 21 days before they got to play their next game. And, and then in the, still in the meantime, play four or five, four, three or four games when you had no chance to win. I mean, I can say it now, but that was that road trip. That was hard. It was hard, but it was also exciting because I knew we were going to, we were going to compete and we almost you know, won a couple of those games. I think it was San Antonio, Houston, and maybe New Orleans. Even the game coming back against uh, Atlanta and then Brooklyn. I mean, it was, I, I'm proud of what we've accomplished, but I'm never, I don't, I know I get the questions, but I'm proud of the organization, how they stood up during all this, these tough decisions that everybody had to make, but they've always talked about the people. I've seen the private meetings. I've heard, been in the private meetings. I've seen the private forums that we've had. And I don't want to get into details what was said because it's confident, but trust me, it was always about the people. And when you work for an organization that's about the people, you don't want to go anywhere else. Scott Abraham. Hey, Scott. Um, you've said numerous times this season that this is a special group, a special team. What are you going to remember most about this group, and, and what do you want fans to appreciate about this group in particular? Um, I remember, remember when I saw the report that we had like zero points zero, whatever it is, 6% chance to make the playoffs with like 30 games to go. And I think we're like 26 in the league overall. But we just, we did those five games segments and everything kind of turned around and we've lost some tough games during that time. But even, even well, I'm gonna remember, I'm gonna remember all the players that's what I always remember. I've won, won games as a player, played on every level you can play in, as a player. I don't really remember, I don't even really remember the championship season that we had, but I remember our championship players that I played with and our championship coach that I played for. Just like when I went to the finals, I don't really remember all that, all the things that happened, but I remember our championship players and. That's what life's about is our memories that you make with one another. And it's, it's, they, we talk about family and second family, but this is, this is what good team, it's a brotherhood. There's only, there's less than 5,000 NBA players ever, ever in the history of the game. And that's why it's so important for all the players to stick by one another because it's such a select group and hard to get in. And once you get in, you gotta, you gotta have, it's a privilege and you got to honor that, that those players that played before you. But I, I feel like this group is learning those lessons because we've got really two good leaders that know the history, know how hard it is to make it, uh, to make it in this league and to be successful in this league and be a playoff team in this league. And, you know, we've only gone since I've been here in three playoffs, but a second round, uh, it's not easy, but, it's to this to me this experience that we have is can help us going into next season and that's what the guys talked about we got a lot of work to do this summer you can take a couple of weeks off but it's about 
getting in the getting in the lab and coming back a little bit better. And if they can see anything, they can look at Russell's career, the same thing, and they can look at Brad. It's such they, they have such a similar career. Not too many guys improve every year because they don't want to put the time in. Because the NBA gives you a lot of opportunities not to do that. Uh, but those two guys improve every year, and that's what we need our younger guys to look at and, and see that and come back better, and they will. And Scott, you know, you said it earlier, everybody has an opinion. And unfortunately, everybody has an opinion on your future in Washington. Some want you to stay. Some believe a change should happen. What is your message to the fans? I love it here. I mean, I don't, I don't get involved in, in that, guys. I, I don't. Like I said, my mom taught me a lot of important lessons that I don't, I mean, negativity doesn't, 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 even seep into my my, my um, mindset. I've always felt that you know, my high school coach, my mom, they all, they always taught me that negativity. Everybody that wants to be negative, those are the people that don't want to go, do the work. They're not focused on doing the work. But the people that are focused on doing the work, they're not negative. They're not. They're not trying to bash people. And I, I don't, I mean, I'm not, I don't know what they're, I don't really know what you're talking about other than the question you ask. I just know that what I want and I love the guys I work with and I don't get involved in stuff like that. I just focus on doing my job. And that's, that's been, it's been pretty good. All right. Last question, Ava. Scott, um, for what you guys needed to accomplish this year with the turnaround, how important was it for you to be able to work with a point guard that you have a relationship with, like the one you do with Russell? It's great. It's great. I mean, Russell changed their culture. He's added to it with with Brad. I mean, like I said, I knew they would get along. I knew they they they're they're it's common. It's got a common denominator. They're winning basketball players. They're championship basketball players, and and I always go back. And this is, I mean. People that complain about players that don't win championships don't really don't really know what how hard it is to win a championship. They've probably never been in that situation, but you win championships by having a championship mind mindset. And we have two guys that are going to teach the rest of the group how to have that mindset. Now, do we win one? I mean, a lot of good fortune has to happen and a lot of development has to happen, but you have that mindset that gives you the that gives you the, the best chance for making that happen. Just first of all, what is your initial reaction to this season coming to an end? Uh, I mean, obviously you don't want to lose or go home, but one thing that's important that I uh, emphasize to the guys in the locker room that by any means we should have our head down. We did something that nobody uh, thought we could even do uh, in the middle of the season. Um, and with that, um, we should be proud of the, the way we played this season. We, we fought through a lot of ups and downs, adversity, injuries, COVID. Um, so we should be proud of the way we, um, as a team collectively, you know, fought. That's a good team on the other side. And, um, you know, good luck to them. I'm interested, um, you know, when you joined this team, obviously it was pretty late in the off season training camp. It, it, uh, how did the way it went and end, I guess, how did the way it end measure up to the expectations that you had kind of set for this team in your own mind when you first? Um, I just wanted to come to a place and um, change the culture, bring my energy, my leadership, um, and make the guys around here better. Um, and I feel like I was able to accomplish that in, in making guys better better players, better people, better basketball players. Um, and then, you know, I, I can I can live with that. The result is always to find as long as you can. Uh, and that's what we did. And I can live with results of guys leaving on the, on the floor um, every single night. And um, I'm okay with that. Fred. Russell, you've obviously known Scotty for a really long time. What what was it like now that you're done with the year? What was it like having gone through this this reunion year with him? And uh, what did you think of the job he did this year? Oh, man, it was amazing. You know, Scotty um, has always been real close uh, to me throughout my career. And 
to be reconnected with him is um was a, just a blessing overall. And this year, man, he did a hell of a job. He did a job that I'm pretty sure people um, didn't think he was able to do. Um, he kept us together. He kept us encouraged. He kept us fighting. Uh, you know, he, he he don't get a lot of credit for it, but like I've always mentioned, he deserves a lot of credit for <clears throat> putting us in position to be successful. You know, obviously we we made some plays and did some things, but he he put us in position. He put the things down to make sure that we are able to do what we're able to do every single night. And I'm thankful just to have a coach that trusts and believes so much in my abilities um, to allow me to go out and you know play my game, mm-hmm. make mistakes, um, and find ways to better help you know this team. And you know he should be. Um, you know, applauded for the job he's done and you know, with this ball club. DA. Oh, with, whether it's with the group that's already there or that's already in your locker room or if there need to be additions, what do you think the next step is? How do you, how does this team get to the next level? Um, you know, I think we, we, we obviously got a lot of guys that we, we all got to come back better, um, but not just that. Uh, we, they're young, man. We got guys, you know, it's funny. I was on the plane on the way here, um, and I'm asking, talking to Rui and Daniel and, um, you know, Garrison, these guys, and I'm at Cash, like, how old are you? They're like 21, you know, 22, 20. I'm just like, and, and I'm not even thinking about it when I thought about it when I got to my room. It's like, man, we – got so many young guys you know Denny he was out but he's 19 20 um you know it's important that they understand that they understand what it's like now to be in the playoffs understand what it's like to be able to fight understand what it's like to be able to uh, not take nights off um and that's a part of my job is to make sure that I'm here to to make sure that that's instilled in them that they understand that the little games we lost earlier in the year those matter the nights where you may be a little tired those nights uh, those games matter. Uh, and, you know, with that, we still fall through and got ourselves in, in the playoffs. But understanding the importance of coming back each year better and being better players and uh, being better pros um, is important, you know, for our group. You were you you were really uh, tight with Rui at times during the season. What does he got? What does he got to bring back when he goes into the lab this summer? I mean, Rui has so many different tools, man. He's so good um, and so talented. Um, my challenge to him is to be able to try to do it um, every night. You know, I think that's a, a, the most difficult thing to do in this league, and that's my challenge to, for him is because when he's able to do it at a level, uh, we're, we're a much better team. We're a better team when he's playing his best um, and just, you know, leaving out on the floor. So that's going to be my challenge for him. Scott. Hey, Russ, uh, you know, you obviously know the NBA is a business and but you're one of the leaders of this team and you know the pulse of the locker room, you know the direction this team could be heading. Do you think it would be a mistake if the Wizards decide not to bring back Scott Brooks? Yeah, I mean, I think um, as far as management, as far as um, ownership, um, that's not my decision. Uh, Me personally, um, I don't see why Scott should go anywhere. Um, and not just because, you know, we're close, but he done a hell of a job with our team, our program um, since I've been here and I'm just around our team and the coaching staff, understanding how important his impact, you know, was to this organization. And uh, when I got here, I was able to see it, you know, firsthand. Um, he's still the same Scott, Coach Brooks. Uh, and he brings the intensity, brings the, uh, the effort, like he was playing, but he's a coach, and you know that's something you can't teach, that's something you can't have. So it was up to me. Um, I don't think he should go anywhere. Russ, you've been on a lot of different teams over your career. What do you appreciate a mo- What do you appreciate most about this group of players you just played with this year? Um, nobody quit, uh, and to me, that that shows so much when you have a group of guys that when everybody said that we weren't able to do something um, and got challenged and I challenged everybody in the locker room, nobody quit, nobody gave up, nobody gave in. Um, you know, we got a lot of guys on this team, man, that I'm just proud of overall that teams didn't want. They were third guys, G League guys, first year guys, 
that nobody else wanted. Um, and we, we put together a team that people wasn't afraid to play us, honestly. And, you know, that's something we should be proud of. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of everybody in the locker room and just thankful to be able to have a group of guys that embrace me um, so well, you know, from day one. Ben Standing. Hey, Russell, it sort of as like a follow up to, to that, like you said, obviously, uh, ownership and management is going to make whatever decisions are ultimately going to come. But as a player of your stature in this league, who's been around and done what you've done, do you anticipate having some sort of a voice in the process or would you like to have one? I mean, you know, if it was up to me, um, like I said, uh, Scotty, I'm not going anywhere, it's not even a question or a conversation uh, to even be brought up. Uh, but if the conversation is brought to me, I'll definitely voice my opinion like I'm voicing it now uh, and, you know, see what happens. And, and as far as the, the, the team goes, uh, I, I know everything just sort of happened, but what's the thing that you guys either need to add or the things to do for, to, for you guys to get to another to the next step? Um, you know, man, for me, I always, as a player, you always look around and you always try to figure out what you need and how to get better and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm, I really believe in um, me as a player and believe that uh, you play the cards you dealt. And what I mean by that is that whatever, whoever's on the roster, whoever's here, and then we just figure it out. And to me, that's just how I think. I, I can't control, this is the business, I can't control who comes back, who's traded, who's not. Um, and I can't control who, what we have, but I can't control my actions and how I can help the people in the locker room and, and, and the cards that we have to make us the best team possible. Chase. Ross, after playing one season with this team and in this city, um, what do you think about just moving forward with them and, and building a future? Um, obviously, you had such a strong connection with the, your first franchise. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's been great, man. Obviously, COVID started off, it was a little different, couldn't do much, had to stay inside a lot, but opening up now a little bit and, and being able to enjoy the city, um, see more people, obviously, see the fans. Um, you know, it's really, been great, man. I'm looking forward to especially next year having kind of everything settled down and back to normal. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, last question to Matt Paris. Yeah, Russell, just following up on that, just how differently does the end of this year feel? Um, you know, how differently does the end of this year feel compared to, I don't know, coming out of Houston or even your last year in OKC, just having that? Does it, is there more security there or anything like that? I mean, listen, I can't control what happens. All I can do is just show up to work and do my job. Uh, and with that, that's all I can do. Uh, be professional, make sure I come back a better player. Um, and that's all I can do. Scott said that you and Russ spoke up a little bit in the locker room there. What was the message you wanted to leave the guys with? Uh, first, I want to praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this season, for our healthy year, and everything like that. Uh, but for the most part, man, it was just re-emphasizing, um, you know, nobody should be, you know, holding their heads down. Uh, nobody really put us to be in the position we're in. Nobody expected us to be here. And I don't think anybody, sure enough, didn't think we'd take them to five. Uh, I still strongly in my heart believe we could have took them to seven. Uh, we just, they made more plays than we did, got more stops than we did tonight. Uh, but. I mean, my message is, you know, the ultimate thing was remember this feeling. Um, a lot of guys, this is their first time in the playoffs. Um, so understand that, you know, once, you know, all the games during the season matter, you know, especially the ones in your conference, you know, playing in Charlotte, playing against Atlanta, uh, playing against Orlando, you know, those games we gave up earlier in the year, they count at the end of the year. So uh, just keeping that in the back of our head and, um, you know, understanding how we can best better prepare ourselves and better put ourselves in a better position in the playoffs, you know, having home court, having, you know, having that mindset of being that caliber team, a playoff team. And so uh, it was a good, good first go around for a lot of guys. Uh, it was definitely frustrating because um, you, you all, we all want to do well and we all want to, you know, contribute as best as we can, but uh, you know, just remember the feeling and get in the gym, you know, that's all we can do. And all that being said, obviously, I'm, I'm sure you don't want to address it now, but do you see that you have a future with this organization? You said at the beginning of the season, you wanted to see that they could they could put a winning infrastructure in place. Did they do enough to entice you to stay? Uh, I mean, I haven't even 
I mean, we're not going to think about that or even talk about it right now. Uh, the biggest thing for me is we we battled the whole year. You know, we didn't start off the year the way we wanted to. Uh, it was frustrating all around for everybody. I was frustrated at times, but uh, I'm a I'm a very optimistic and I, I persevere through a lot of adversity. And uh, I think we did that as a team. So for me, uh, I think we just best put ourselves in a position to win, you know, and uh, we may do with what we had at times. You know, we had a lot of guys out, a lot of different lineups throughout the year. Um, so for the most part, you know, I just, I was happy with that. You know, I was happy with the fact we competed and, you know, we gave ourselves a chance at the end of the year. Uh, we obviously still need to get better. There's still a lot, we have a lot of room for improvement all across the board, but uh, I haven't thought about none of that as of yet, Abel, sorry. Chase. Brad, um, Russ just said that, that he'd like to see uh, Scott Brooks back next year. Obviously, his, his contract, this was the final year. Just w what did you think about the, the job that he did this season? Man, it's just crazy. I've been with Scott for five years now, and it's, every year has been different. And, you know, he's he coaches his tail off. You know, he, he goes out there, and he's he's all about his team. And he's, he supports us and defends us and wants us all to do well. Um, you know, he's a true player's coach. Um, and you don't see that often around the league. And, uh, you know, I've been appreciative of him. I feel like he's, from the moment he got here, you know, was a facilitator creator. You know, he gave me the opportunity to be able to make plays and we put the ball in my hands. So I'll forever be grateful for him um, and, and happy that I was able to, you know, share these five years with him, obviously. You know, this is his last year. Uh, we don't know what the future holds. You know, obviously we talked to Ted, talked to Coach, you know, in the next couple of days and even Shep and see what we're going to do. But uh, I don't know. That's that's kind of out of my hands. And you've been able to step your game up uh, pretty much each of the last, like, six years. Uh, as you look ahead to this offseason, I know it's just beginning, but um, what would you like to work on as you look ahead to next year? I have no idea. I'm still processing this loss. Um, Obviously, my, my main objective is always to make sure I'm better uh, every year and whatever that entails, I'm going to definitely take some time off, rest my body, and then, you know, diving back into film, diving back into my game and, and my craft and figuring out, you know, what's the next step, next level for me. Um, obviously, you know, I've had a good year, um, you know, made all-star, hopefully make all NBA, whatever the case may be. But, you know, eventually I want to be an MVP caliber player. So. Uh, maybe that's what's next, you know, just continue to push myself and being better positions to succeed. Fred. Hey, Brad. Uh, you know, the, the fluky stuff of the season aside, the COVID stuff and the injuries and all that, what, what do you feel like you guys as a team need to improve on going into next year? Uh, our defense, we, we got to, obviously, I mean, that's, 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 that's pretty obvious. We got to, got to defend better. Um, you know, we have to shoot better. We definitely, we got to be able to shoot the ball better. Uh, I definitely wish I would have had a better three point shooting year, um, than I have, but I think that's what goes for everybody. You know, we all, we just, we got to be better with shooting the ball, uh, and defend it. I think that's, that's been our, Kind of Achilles heel our year, you know, our ability to be able to guard guys and uh, knock down shots. So uh, we got to be better at that. Yeah. Brad, just wondering, you know, a couple of years ago, the organization went, decided we're, we're going to have to do things a little differently in terms of bringing some young guys in and, and doing that. And there was kind of uncertainty about what it was going to look like going forward. I wonder how different you feel about things going forward, knowing that Westbrook is going to be beside you now and that, you know, his impact on the team will continue going forward. Uh, like I said earlier, I haven't thought past tonight. Um, but, you know, having Russ here was was unbelievable. Uh, you know, I've done nothing but cherish cherish his presence uh, since the moment he got here. Uh, and he's done nothing but, you know, welcome me with open arms and, and vice versa. So, uh, you know, that's that's promising, you know, in a lot of ways. You know, you definitely 
especially for somebody who wants to be here too, you know, um, you know, that, that definitely, definitely lifts me up in a lot of ways. Uh, but, you know, we both, we both know we got to be better. We both know we have to be, you know, the leaders of the organization and, uh, and, and, and guide us a lot better than, than what we did, you know? So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I haven't thought past it, honestly, you know, past the night, but, you know, Russ is a good cornerstone to any franchise. Uh, you know, then we we made some really good moves, adding Gafford, who's, you know, been a, a great lob threat rim protector for us, you know, the whole second half of the year. Rolo's the hook king for us. You know, we had a lot of guys, you know, in the last year of their contracts who, you know, went out here and gave it their all and competed their tails off. So, I mean, obviously we have a lot of tough decisions to make in the off season. Uh, but, you know, with the guys that we had, you know, they really stepped up and, and performed. You know, we seen Rui grow the whole year. Uh, and, and everybody, you know, everybody really stepped up when it mattered. So yeah. you can always be appreciative of that. I, I know recruiting is kind of an ongoing thing and it never really stops. You feel like you, you are able to make a pitch now to free agents, you know, like, we got something here. We're this thing's going in the right direction now. I hope so. I mean, obviously, you know, hopefully teams watch us and you know see what we're capable of doing and see how we compete. You know, we're a very competitive team. Uh, you know, we don't we don't care who it is. You know, everybody laces their shoes up just like we do, and we're going to go out and we're going to compete and and play hard and uh, get out and play fast. That's that's who we are and that's what we do. Um, you know, DC is an unbelievable market, true sports town. Um, so I don't, I don't see why nobody wouldn't want to be interested in coming to DC. Uh, obviously recruiting is, is definitely tough. It's ongoing, like you said. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to the summer and, uh, you know, my recruiting will definitely start tonight or tomorrow, but for the most part, it's, uh, uh, just taking a break and just, uh, you know, reflecting on the year and see how we can be better moving forward and how our team can be better. Matt Paris. Hey, Brad, as DA was saying, obviously there's been a lot of changes and, you know, the end result the last from the last time you guys made the playoffs is still the same, a first round exit. So I guess just, does it feel different now being in the moment? Like, does it feel any different compared to the last time that you were in the playoffs and, you know, your season ended the way you didn't want it to? Uh, yeah, I feel like they're, they're definitely two different series. Uh, I think that Toronto series, we... I don't know. I, I didn't. I feel like they kind of whooped our butt every game in that series. Um, and this this one, I feel like we were we were in control of a lot of it and we were in it. So, uh, and they're two different, two, two totally different teams too. So, uh, on both both sides. So uh, I'm definitely. I mean, you, you you can be proud of what we did, but obviously there's no more victories. Um, you know, so you know you tip your hat off to Philly who. You know, they came out and executed their game plans on a nightly basis and uh, they got us out of here. And you know how kind of the machine works of there are going to be articles uh, about your future and you'll do the best to ignore that, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess just being in this situation for so long now that you have been, because, you know, it's been going on a while, just what have you learned from actually having to deal with that? And, and um, is there anything you learned specifically this year about kind of the gravity of rumors or everything like that? Uh, ultimately, I'm in control. Like, I'm not, I think that's my biggest thing is, you know, people can report whatever they want, but, uh, you know, I know what where my mind is and I know, you know, if it's not coming from the horse's mouth, then I'm just going to be rumors. So, I mean, I expect them. I mean, they're, shit, they're starting now. So, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. I mean, they're definitely going to increase a lot more this year when we go into the last year of my deal. But uh, for me, you know, I'm just, I'm relaxing, and, you know, resting my body and, you know, we'll evaluate all that, you know, once summer comes, uh, you know, I meet with Ted, meet with Shep. Neil. Hey, Brad, I know you, you know, do a much more thorough assessment and reflection on the season, you know, in the coming weeks, but when you look back right now and everything you guys have gone through, do you, look at the season positively. You talked a lot about, you know, getting back to having fun. Is that something that you feel came back this season? Always, man. You, you know, I think that's that's one thing I always try to remind, you know, my teammates and anybody who plays the game, even my AU kids. Like, you know, it's, it's easy to lose sight of why you play the game. 
Uh, you know, because whether you, you're pressing or whether you want to do so well to win or contribute to the team, it's very easy to lose sight of, you know, why you play the game, you know, when you were five, six, you know, it's because it was fun. You embraced it. You loved it. Um, nothing changes from being, you know, at the highest level ever. So, you know, it's the same motto, same men mentality, uh, you know, embracing the stage you're on, uh, understanding and trusting your work. You know, you, you worked your tail off to be where you are. Uh, so have fun in the game, you know, go out and give it your all and understand that you put in the work to be where you are and just let it go out there and shine. And obviously you've been, you know, very complimentary of Russ before. This will be your first season having after playing with him going to the off season. Do you think that his mentality that he's instilled with you can even help you take your off season game to another level? Oh, for sure. Uh, I mean, just his persona, you know, and who he who he is and what he's about uh, is all exemplary. You know, you definitely you take pieces of what he does and his approach to the game and his focus and his confidence, and you, you definitely try to, you know. Uh, you know, mixing it to 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 what you what you have going. So it's been it's been great, man. We've it was an easy adjustment for me uh, to play off of him. He's 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 it's so crazy to hear all the the rumors of how difficult he would be with you know to play with. But it's been the complete opposite. You know, he's he's been very heartwarming. You know, he's a great teammate, and uh, he just competes. You know, he he wants to win. You know? And that's and then those are the guys I want to be surrounded by. So uh, it's only the stepping stone. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Last question to Ben. Hey, Brad. Um, there's a, uh, a a saying that comic book fans know: with great power comes great responsibility. Um, this organization has entrusted you with a lot of power from a standpoint of really kind of building the team around you these last couple of years. I'm just wondering from that. From everything you've experienced, what have you what have you learned about that responsibility, and how do you think you've uh, ultimately handled it? Uh, well, I think I've handled it good or solidly. Um, I understand that not everybody in the league has power and control, or let's say so, in the organization. So it's something I don't take for granted. You know, it's something that I'm very appreciative of and thankful for. Um, and just understanding the history of this organization and. Uh, you know, going from, you know, John to transition into me, like it's been, it's been wild, you know, but I embrace every single step and every moment of it. Um, and, you know, not, like I said before, not everybody has that opportunity to be, you know, a franchise cornerstone or that piece that, you know, they look to build around. So, you know, I don't take it for granted that, you know, that just motivates me and pushes me to get better and be better. Um, I still have a lot I can be better at and improve on and, in terms of my leadership and what I do on the floor. Uh, but for the most part, man, I, I, I was pretty satisfied. How would you summarize this year for yourself considering how eventful it was in so many ways? And, and would you consider this season for you guys a success? Um, You know, it's just, it was just a lot of up and down for me. Um, You know, it was, a, I would say a lot of you know, discouragement when it came to just what I was able to do for a team in any situation. You know, I was at Chicago and I was just trying to figure out that situation and just basically, you know, figure out me and be able to do the things that I could do to be successful on the team in Chicago, certain things like that. Um, then I got traded. And, you know, there, this is no disrespect to Chicago. You know, I love Chicago from coaches, staff, players, you know, anybody, you know, Chicago, you know, I felt like was home for the, you know, year and a half that I was there, but I mean, you know, it's a business part of it. And then coming here to Washington, like I, like I tell everybody, you know, it was a, it was a new start for me. So just all the events, certain things that I did, that all happened because of just, you know, the opportunity that I was gave, given here. Um, I just came here, I locked in mentally. And I decided that I wasn't going to take anything for uh, for granted. You know, I had an opportunity in Chicago, and I took that for granted. You know, I just came in like that, and I took care of my business here. I didn't want to go back down the road that I was going to Chicago. I felt like every day I wasn't doing the things that I needed to do to be successful on that team. And if I felt like I was holding the team back night in, night out. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, it's a lot of people that were saying the same thing. Um, so 
once again, like I, I came here to Washington and it was just, you know, a whole different story for me. Just decided to lock in, come out and play hard every night. You know, it's a lot of things that just showed me that whenever I just actually take the opportunity and work during that opportunity, I can, I, I'll be fine. That's my main thing. And what do you feel like getting into the off season? What do you feel like is the aspect of your game that you're going to try to work on the most? Most definitely just, you know, add as much weight as I can possibly do. You know, it was a lot of games and stuff that I was exposed down low. I was getting pushed around. You know, I was that I, I take, you know, I take a real, I take pride in doing things like that. Cause you know, I battle with guys like, you know, like tonight I was battling with Dwight Howard. I battled with Joel and B, you know, battling with guys that are not nine times out of 10 times bigger than me. So I want to be in a position to where, you know, I can push guys around too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but other than that, just really just putting on some pounds for sure. Um, working on my conditioning because I mean, you know, I'm, I'm getting the minutes that, you know, that I'm working for and I mean, I can't be out there gassed. So, you know, if I want to play 20 plus minutes every night, my condition has to be top tier. So that's really going to be a big thing for me. And just really just, you know, working on little things, you know, if I catch the ball in the paint, being able to dribble it and not, you know, get it stolen or anything like that. I have worked on that before, but it's just like, you know, I do it in the game and I get hesitant and it's a lot of just, you know, I'm just stuck in the moment and I can't really do anything about it. So. Those are the main three things. Really, just working on that conditioning, strength, and really just being about better decision making when it comes to me playing out of the pocket. Jason, hey Daniel, uh, we've heard that uh, Russ and Brad addressed the team after the game in the locker room about how you guys should be proud about uh, the way the season went. Um, what did they say, and what was your your takeaway from that? Yeah, they said we should be proud because of the things that we did this season. Oh, they didn't nobody give up, didn't nobody, you know, lay down and just accept the fact that, you know, we were going to be out of the playoffs or anything like that. Like when I came here, there was no this there there was no like head down, bad vibes, anything. You know, we came out and we played for something every night. You know, it was the ups and downs during that time, you know, so it was a lot of losses that we felt like we shouldn't have lost. Um, but other than that, we just kept fighting. You know, we stayed together as a team and we helped each other, motivated each other. And just came in with smiles on our faces and came in ready to work. You know, we knew what time it was every time we stepped on the floor. And being there for each other as a team, that was the main thing that helped us get through it. We stayed together, we stayed locked in as a unit, and we got to where we are today. You know, we hate the outcome of it, but at the same time, you know, we had a low, there was a very low percent chance of the Wizards being in the playoffs. And we changed that, we changed that narrative. You know, we, Got we started from the ground up and worked our way back up to be in this position that we were in today. You know, like I said, we hate that we lost, but you know, we worked to get in this position. And Coach Brooks uh, was talking about you and, and said he views you as uh, sort of like a lottery pick. I think he said even maybe even like a top five pick. Uh, now that you've had some success in this league at 22, just what do you think about the, your own potential? Um. If I stay locked in mentally, work on my consistency, I mean, I can be in this league for a long time. You know, probably a lot of people in the world that probably would, you know, disagree with that, but that's their opinion. My opinion is that I'm gonna make it in this league. It's just that. Yeah. Hey, Gaff, I, I was wondering, what do you think, uh, you said you, you wanted to try to put on a little bit of, of weight this summer. Uh, what do you think you can hold and still maintain your athleticism? Um, I don't know. I hadn't really, <laughs> I hadn't really even thought about that. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm going to push myself to the limit for sure. Get as big as I can. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you brought a, a verticality to this team that they, that they didn't have this year. What's, I guess, defensively other than being able to hold your, your spot down in the post are there other things that you that you want to work on defensively especially that you think you can get better at most definitely guard one through five because i mean tonight you know ben simmons i was having to guard ben simmons most of the times down the floor and he was he was just going at me 
you know, Tobias Harris, he was going at me. Anybody that I was going, you know, they were going at me. It was times where I stood my ground, but most of the times I was getting blown by, getting a layup shot on me, or I was fouling. So just being better defensively, working on just being able to contain one through five. Because, I mean, there's going to be a lot of situations to where it's going to be guys that try to pull me out and expose me, and I don't want that to happen. Um, I want to be one of those bigs that can be able to guard every position when it comes down to it. Matt Paris. Hey, Daniel, I'm kind of curious, like for your conditioning, I mean, if you if you add weight, well, you being heavier, like will that affect the conditioning aspect of it at all? Like are you worried that kind of putting on too, like, too much weight will affect like, the, whether you'd be winded in games or anything like that? Mm, there's no telling. You know, I mean, that would be something that I would have to deal with when the time comes, I would say. And if it comes to that, you know, I'm going to have to cut them pounds off. <laughs> Thanks. Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Obviously, you know, it's been a crazy three plus months for you um, mm -hmm. coming here. You have the injury as well. When Russ and Brad are, you know, constantly in your ear and, um, you know, motivating you, how much, you know, extra does that make you want to go into the all season and come back even better? Uh, it motivates me a lot. You know, you got two great players and you're just saying that you can do a lot in this league, you know, and just really just playing consistent and stay motivated. It means a lot because that's exactly what I'm about to go to, <laughs> you know, um, take this little break. You know, it's been a somewhat of an up and down season for me in general. Um, but other than that, once I get my break out of the way, I'm back in the gym, working out, for sure, just working on my craft because I want to be the best I can be year in, year out. I don't want to, you know, just have this good second half of the season that I've had and then come back next year and then what happened to Daniel Gafford. I don't want that to happen. So most definitely my mentality is to get as better as I possibly can during the offseason because, you know, just coming back next year, we want to be the best we can be. We want to be playing in the same spot that we were in this year, for sure. Even maybe even higher. So, you know, sky's the limit at this point. Yeah.